a really interesting segment there. Andrew McCabe still talking a lot just about everywhere. Sean Spicer, senior advisor and spokesman for the Super PAC America First Action, former White House press secretary. Sean, how you doing? Um, Good morning, you, Bill. You've been watching him speak everywhere. What do you think we're learning from him now, Sean? We're learning that he wants to sell books. Uh, this is the Comey playbook. You get fired, you write a book, you make up salacious allegations, and you do a massive media tour. Uh, it's no surprise, but I think we've got to remember who Andrew McCabe is. Investigators felt as though he misled them. They said, quote, the, in the inspector general said, quote, he lacked candor with them. Uh, and, and so this is a gentleman who has a history with, of misleading investigators, of, of, uh, of not being straightforward. And so now he's doing everything he can to sell as many books as he can and make as much money. But the reality is, is this is a guy who is dismissed by the inspector general because he lacked candor and he misled them. So, you know, I think the viewers, wherever he is, have to keep in context who this individual is and the playbook that he's following. So he did NBC yesterday morning. He did CNN last night. It was MSNBC this morning. But I want to go back to The View and pick up on this exchange that got a lot of attention. This is Meghan McCain with a very specific question. Watch here. Were you ever a leaker to the New York Times? Absolutely not. No, not, not in any time ever. Um, you should understand, Megan, when I was serving as deputy director, I was one of two people in the FBI that had the authority to disclose information to the media. That is an FBI policy. Why did James Comey deny the claim that he approved your leaks to the press? I don't know why Jim Comey doesn't remember the conversations that we had in the same way that I do. Well, who knew? I mean, the view's coming down hard there, Sean. Yeah, that's a first. Of all places. Uh, but, 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 exactly. But the thing that's interesting about that exchange is the nuance. He says he didn't leak, but then he goes on to explain why he was authorized to disclose and talk to the media, meaning that in his mind, he doesn't view what he said as a leak because he was authorized to do it under, under the way that the FBI is structured uh, in terms of who can talk to the media. So he's not denying that he talked to them. What he's saying is he didn't leak to them. And that's a very interesting nuance. Okay, uh, we'll see where that goes. Uh, you follow this story with the Covington Catholic, right? Where the Washington Post got a $250 million lawsuit. I just want to re read a couple excerpts from the lawsuit that we picked up so far. Number one, here we go. The Post engaged in a modern day form of McCarthyism to claim leadership of a mainstream and social media mob of bullies which attacked, vilified, and threatened Nicholas Sandman. Here's another one. The Post ignored basic journalistic standards because it wanted to advance its well known and easily documented bias agenda against President Donald J. Trump. What do you think this is teaching us, Sean? What do you think of the suit that's been filed on behalf of Lynn Wood? Well, I hope that he wins, uh, and I hope that this is just the first of several to come. This is a teenager who was accused of these heinous things, and as they said in that lawsuit, basic journalistic standards weren't followed. From now on, every Google search will follow him wherever he goes and many of the other students that went to Covington because the Post and countless other media institutions didn't do the basics. For all of these institutions that decry fake news and, and attacks on the media, here is example number one why people have lost faith in the media. They continue to perpetuate stories as long as they further the narrative that anybody that's a conservative or that supports Trump should be convicted and condemned. That was their, that was their crime, that they wore a MAGA hat, that they wore a Make America Great hat. That was what the Post realized. Once they saw that hat, then he was guilty. He needed to be convicted and condemned and they went all in after him. A 16-year-old kid is now tarnished forever because they've not only failed, it's not that they failed to follow journalistic principles. They didn't want to do it because they wanted to make sure that they got this kid. Well, in this case, perhaps you have a point there. But all media is not bad, and it was your job no. to, to stand up for the president in your position, but also to be fair to the reporters who were covering him. Uh, and then we got this tweet about 30 minutes ago from the White House. West Wing, the New York Times reporting is false. They are a true enemy of the people. That's from the president yet again. Well, I've made very clear during my time and, and since I left the White House that I don't paint the press with a broad brush. I think there are some good reporters and there are some bad ones. 
But, you know, it took CBS's Lara Logan the other day to call it out and say that all of these institutions, the New York Times, the Washington Post, CBS, NBC, ABC, all of them have a disposition on the left. And their, their problem is, is that they won't admit their own bias. And in particular, with this particular president, there is an absolute personal venom and, and hatred and vitriol because they don't like him and they don't like the interactions that they have with him. They've made it very personal. And in so many cases, they're, they've stopped being objective and have made it a personal crusade to go after them. Oh. But the reality is, is that they can't claim to be objective. There are some really good reporters in that press room. And there are some really good people out there reporting. But by and large, the most of them are left-leaning and have made it a cause celeb to go after this president. Sean, thanks for your time. Um, there's a lot more to come up on this, too. And uh, we know the president gave an interview to New York Times recently, so we're following that. Thank you, Sean. It's good to have you back on our program here today as we watch this. Sean Spice, they are live. Lynn Wood is the attorney for Nick Salmon, as I mentioned. He's going to be a guest of our program.